So this diagram doesn't have the game instance in it because I, I don't think we'll actually use it, but I want to cover it because we may use it in the future. But when I just wanted to show you this diagram because when I reference the Unreal Framework, these are the sort of classes I'm talking about. So the classes listed here and the game instance. Unreal Engine Framework classes are classes that are in the engine for us to use and they give us so much functionality that they're really worth exploring and understanding and, and definitely understanding what they do and what they provide. So the game instance is essentially the instance of the game that's running. So if we look at it in a multiplayer sense, each client will have their own game instance. The, the game instance is persistent across level transitions. So when you host a game in multiplayer, the, any data stored on the game instance will maintain, it won't be reset, whereas the game mode and other framework classes and do all the initialization all over again. Game instance is only destroyed when the client exits their game. So if we've got any data that we need to persist across hosting a game, for example, so if we want to have uh, a lobby where we change settings and then we want to populate that into the game, there's a couple of ways we can do it, but one way is to store it on the host game instance and then share that data somehow once the server hosted the game. Because you've got to remember that each client has their own game instance. They don't have access to the shared data of the host's game instance. And we use other classes to share that sort of data, like game state and things like that, which we'll cover. So let's create the game instance. Doing your idea, come into your RTS core plugin, come to source, and we want to come to the public folder. I'm going to create an Unreal class. And I'm going to call so any plugin that I'm I'm in, I'm going to prefix with the plugin name. And then whatever my class is going to be. So that's going to be sort of like the naming convention I'm going to use. If you've called your plugins anything different, you could do the same with your own name or I'll leave it up to you. Probably don't want to just call it like you know game instance because there's going to be potentially multiple of some classes. And for the directory structure, I'm going to try and use the directory structure in all the plugins and including the project. So when we're looking for a particular thing, it should always be in the same place no matter what source folder it's under. So I always, in my other videos, I always call, put these sort of classes in a folder called framework. So I'm going to do the same here. And this is more like a manager class, so I'm going to put it under manager, managers. Uh, if you connected your Git, you, you may get this. Click don't ask you. Of course you want it to add to the Git. It's just tagging the file to be committed. All right, so now I'm going to come to source and then RTS framework. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a project class. So this is what you do when you actually had a project, say, and you imported RTS core and you go, okay, I want to use the RTS core in game instance. Rather than just point to the RTS core game instance, you can come in here and create a new class that inherits off it. So I'm going to call it, uh, I want to use the full framework name. It's pretty long. So I'm going to just call this uh, RF game instance. I'll search for my core name instance, put that in the same framework pages folder. So now when we set our project to use the game instance, we can set it to use the project one. And then in the plugins, if we have another plugin that wants to inherit from core and then add some implement implementation in, and then all we need to do is point this, this source uh, this this one to inherit off whichever plugin game instance we want to use, and this will apply to all those framework classes later on. So I might just add a constructor to these so it doesn't have any issues, and we'll add just uh, the f the object initializer. Like so. And that's all we need to add, just that. We'll do that to both. And we just need the super at the end. Like that. We can probably just copy this to save us some time.
info and then I'm going to come into the project. Oh, the off gets a change in name. Oh, I haven't added a public. Right, so back in the editor now, you can see now that we've created a C++ class in our core plugin, we get the core C++ folder visible now, got our class in there. So all, all I want to do in the editor is just assign our uh, game instance to our core, sorry, no, not core, the RF game instance. And we could probably, to stop that coming up there and being choosable, we could make that abstract. So I might just do that quickly. We'll go to core and just add that abstract. Pretty simple one to start with. And the next part will go on with the game mode, which is a much more interesting and larger class.